today I'm first going to focus on, you know, the 2021 season, especially here in the Baca, Hilabang, and some other like suffered Valley, you know, in terms of visit what I say 2021 season. So it, 2021 season is uh, nothing out of ordinary, you know, it's more like there's no major disease outbreak at the regional or statewide level. It's pretty crowded, but some of these diseases are currently there affecting the crop, probably reduce the yield to some extent. I want you to be on your radar, you know, to be aware of this. Diseases. So first I'm going to talk about the diseases on wheat and barley. So last year I traveled across the state and uh, you know, scouting for some of the diseases. Those are uh, the diseases that I found here. <clears throat> so in terms of rust, you know, we have uh, strep rust or yellow rust, you know, barley or wheat. Um, in, in history here in the state, it's a very minor issue. You know, it's occurred from year to year, never reached the epidemic epidemic level here. You know, and uh, but the, the rust pathogen is, you might not know aware of it. You know, it's kind of like a, if it's outbreak, it's you know at the continent level. You know, they have pathogen have a very complex uh, epidemiology. So it's uh, as a part of the efforts. You know. To monitor the rust uh, you know, movement. And so I was doing that part of work. The last year, the, the rust pressure across the United States, you know, California, Washington, are pretty low, really low, and even in the south, like in Louisiana. And uh, so we don't find any of the rust here in the state. And in terms of other, like uh, leaf spot diseases, like a uh, loose smart, and, uh, you know, um, and also a couple of other things. What I found in you here, I want to just show you the symptoms later. So, okay. So the first one I saw uh, quite a bit here in Hila Bay area is this uh, leaf blad, like a fungal leaf blad, as you can see here. It's moving to start a kind of a middle late in the ceiling. And as you can see, you know, some of this leaf are kind of really blighted, you know. And this is the, this, this photo is taken at the Hila Bay Fair. Um, actually, uh, we took a, we had 2,000 samples, went back to lab, looking some isolation. So there's a variety of fungal pathogens associated with that, uh, uh, you know, the blight. You, you have Ordinera, so many of you know, we have Staphidium, leaf blight, of course, and we have, you know, uh, Curvillaria and some other species. So most of those fungal species affect uh, the grass, you know, in general, like even the turf or long grasses. You know. So uh, I was Probably in certain fields, you know, this fungal leaf, uh, leaf blight is going to affect your crop, you know, but it may not cause crop failure or reduce your yield significantly. Uh, but if you, because this uh, fungus can be seed borne, if you save your seed for that season, probably in some of the fields have this, you probably think about fungicide treatment for that in terms of seed treatment, maybe to reduce the. Um, uh, the spread. So another thing we see in the body field is this leaf stripes. This is something new, actually. As you can see, you know, this this picture took a you know, field here in Bakai, and uh, there's a lot of this leaf with a long strap, brown strap running in the middle of the leaf. And if it's severe later, it will the whole leaf will die. I just showed you that photo over there. And uh, so the body leaf strap is a disease. Um, you know, it's, it's a problem worldwide in Australia, even in the United States, and uh, it's, it's not a very major, it's, it's a single-born disease, and uh, there are a lot of diseases, the symptoms are pretty similar, you know, to the, uh, the leaf strap, so the pathogen also is in the same genus. Um, so we, uh, we did some isolation confirmed by, you know, take a piece of DNA, barcode in. it turned out to be this, uh, Carnophora gramine. You know, this fungal species has been reported in the United States, you know, several other states like Colorado, Texas, um, but never been reported here in Arizona. So this this fungus could be new here, you know. So we what we need to do is to, you know, we have this pure culture, you know, we want to replicate the symptom in the greenhouse to see the fungus, you know. We identify that it's really called similar symptoms. I'm trying to confirm whether you know this is the thing. So, last time, as I mentioned, that we have the 
Kind of you feel have this loose mark here in Baca, Baca area. So the field, in terms of this incidence, is very from field to field. I come across a field just right on the highway. This field have a lot of loose, loose mark, you know. Um, the other one, is the, in terms of piece, of, I don't, this one is mostly affected the seasoning. It's not very common. Normally called the stunting. This is the field in Pinar County. Uh, it's for cattle, I guess. Um, they have a, some kind of stunting yellow, and uh, so we got some sample confirmed it's a piece of you know, several pieces of this. You know. The piece of my you know, is associated with overwatering, cooling condition, or seed quality, you know. And so it could happen here. It's not a major issue. You know, in North Carolina state, you know, they found that it's a problem over there for the winter much over there. But here, I think it's it's presence here that may not cause a major problem. So a lot of the condition, this is it's like a deep uh, teeth dieback of this durum weight. This come from a uh, wheat breather here in Eloy. And uh, so they suspected maybe some kind of bacteria or mute strictly this which is seed born can be serious. And so um, it turns out that it's not the it's not this lanthimolus, lanthimolus. Uh, so the symptom is that actually if you look carefully, it's very different. For the leaf streak, you, you have this non streak, kind of like this barley leaf strap. But for the bacterial diseases, a lot of times you will see this shiny, shiny appearance, like you see here, you know. Clearly the, the picture of we have here in front of this window, we don't have that you know, um, symptom. So again, you know, this is the, what the strap rust looks like. So as for this say that, you know, many of you, if you are out in the field scouting for the <coughs> this, if you see any of this yellow rust, let me know. You know I'm very interested in to get, you know, the, a sample. I want to send it out to get the risk identified, you know, which is it. That information will be very important in terms of you know control, you want to find the resistant of the you know. Okay, so in terms of carbon diseases, uh, again, you know, we have this cotton root rot with the soil diseases. It's uh, common across the state here. It, it, you know, if you have a field historically have this disease to persist in that field for a while, and uh, so it's symptom is a crop circle. I'm not even talking about a man of you already. Pretty familiar on cotton, it can occur, occur on brick wire, it can occur on the, you know, alfalfa, and the can pistachio, you know, have a broad host range. Um, this is actually the fungus spread, as you can see, on a piece of root rub. And basically, the fungus destroys the vascular system by secreting enzyme to degrade the cell wall. And uh, so the plant under the stress, it will show the virgin symptom. Normally, it's uh, uh, during the you know, the ball field pure. So, very senior well. A lot of soil bone in 2021, 2021 season, I have to say, is the most uh, frequent one I saw last season. I haven't seen in 2020, 2019, 2018, but the 21, 2021 season, I've been to many, many fields across the state. And uh, there's a many fields have this, you know, yellowing, wilting. If you look carefully, they have this, you know, porosis between mm -hmm. the brain, marginally for symptoms of many, many fields. Here are some of the variety affected actually with the, uh, the, the high form that Arizona Cotton Research and Protection comes up. Um, we will be able to identify some of those fields, you know, which variety was affected. Um, so in terms, so the few more focus about this disease. So, you know, the, the way to identify it is to cross section, looking for this, uh, um, you know, the streaking, the discoloration in the that diamond tissue. But sometimes it can be confused with your work, which is a lot of what we didn't talk about. And uh, <clears throat> so this is a couple more picture of this word is um, But I would say here, you know, we have this so many fields you have high degree of incidence, but in terms of severity, it can really defoliate the cotton. It's all, all, it also should not be making the same. So I'm not expecting, you know, to 
have a major impact on your yield. But not saying that this is something in terms of symptom expression somehow last year when we were high. So in terms so in terms of uh, is there with will this another swollen on the pathology is the vascular is it like for the cinema will and so historically uh, the fusarium whales is a common disease is, you know from in the um, southeast and uh, in, the, in the east woman is, is more common on sandy soil associated with the root not and because you know historically it's we have is risk one, but there are many, many different races for genotype, as you call it. I think it's more uh, it's firm. So, so, so risk one required the, you know, you do not have enough presence to, to have that, uh, you know, severe expression. But recently, the risk four has a shoot up, it's really concerned with cotton industry. So, we, you know, I have been doing a survey looking for the risk four. Was three or four years since 2018. Yeah, almost four years now, and uh, I have not detected the risk for in our state. So risk for is a very aggressive uh, strain of this fungus. It's mostly attacked the pima cotton. It's a young you know, seedling disease, more like occur on the you know uh, between the uh, between two and eight leaf load, you know, and uh, so it caused the uh, so but. During this survey, I do find a few there, few there will in our state. Here is a picture of a field in Suffolk Valley. As you can see, uh, this is this photo taken, yeah, mid August. So it's already, you see, some of this row have wilted yellow and some kind of do die. And, uh, but not, not very widespread. It's just a few, a couple of fields so far have the symptom. And in most cases, in those fields, has been done cotton continuously for more than 10 years. And if you pull the, this plant up, you will find that in addition to fusarium web, you also have roots not memory. So, again, um, to match that pattern. This is how, the, how you, uh, you know, can diagnose the disease. Again, you cross the sacks, cross the section, the stem, looking for that the discoloration, varnish. In the center of the stem. So, the way it's uh, the staining is different from Virgicinium wood. Virgicinium wood is more discontinuous. The Virgicinium, uh, the, the fusarium is more continuous. Mm -hmm. And also, sometimes you see a, a, a dark dot in the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like herbicide damage, it's like they're straight to the road. The herbicide damage? I'm not saying it is, but I mean, yeah. we got one row of stuff streaking the center. Right, you wonder if you've done so. Right, right. It could be like that. It could be, yeah. Like a bad model or something. Right, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Depending on what type of herbs that, you know, like 240 will cause a lot of symptoms, very similar to that. Capital will be that 50 years too hard. Right, right. Absolutely. Um, so, okay. Yeah, this is a lot of field that just show you in. Kind of just based on some symptom expression, first can be confused with the vertical where it, the way to, to differentiate is just the cross section of step and looking for the, the discoloration pattern. So the other disease I said here we uh, we haven't done much research since 20, <clears throat> you know, 2000 is this nematode issue here on cotton. And this is the survey done by our Nematologist Dr. McClure back in 2000, you know, he did a survey, he found a, a wide range of uh, nematode species, you know, associated with, with our cotton here. Of course, you know, root not nematode is the most common one across the state. There's some other one, like Nishin nematode, stunt nematode, you know, is present here. And, but since that, really, we haven't done any survey work. And uh, in, in terms of the, Determine the impact of nematode uh, on the cotton production. So during this fusarium web survey, I happened to you know went to many fields. There's a many fields that have you know poor stand issue, stunted. You certain it come with the patches. You know many many fields across um, uh, the state have this kind of condition. 
And also, um, the soil types are really uh, vary. You know? And uh, so, we do have a lot of roots, not nematode. Um, so, another nematode, I think, which should be on our radar is this radical, which is a big problem in the southwest, you know, in the south and in the southeast. And uh, here in, in Arizona, we haven't detected you know, uh, the, the radiform nematode here. And it can be a big problem for sweet potato production, you know. And we, I know in our state, we have some acreage of sweet potato production. Historically, we have more, but now it's uh, very small acreages. And uh, this is a very good host for radiform nematode. Um, so, so, this year, just a message out, you know, I want to uh, do a survey on them. I want to make the poor around probably 150 samples across the state, the soil sample. If you have any field, have, you know, um, have a poor stunt issue, you know, year after year consistently, and they all have stunt issue, that means I'd like to, for a sample, you know, to detect what kind of nanotech species associated with this field. Um, so, the, What's well, narrow leaf spot on cotton? This is another familiar fungal disease. It's, as I would say, it's occur more in suffer Grand County have hair elevation in there. And then in Morana or the uh, Coolidge area also have some, but not as bad as in suffer right? We have all this uh, uh, brown spots. And, and if you, <clears throat> the fungus can pretty much attack a leaf, you know, a flower. Or, you know, um, so it's it's not going to be a big issue. Just be aware of it. If it come around in the same and good condition, right? Maybe you have a lot of rain, a lot of moisture, it can defoliate your cotton early, and that may impact the yield. Um, so last one, the cotton leaf growth or wolf virus. We don't have it here in Arizona, but this is another virus today that we need to. On the lookout for it's right now it's uh, you know it's a it's a virus disease is transmitted by the the aphids okay the, the carbon aphids and the symptom is like the drooping and also you know crinkling and stunking so again it's have like a wide range of symptom expression and they can be confused with the herbicide damage like two four D and uh, so um. So the bad app can protect this. So if you, uh, you know, stop for disease, if you see any of the symptoms, I'd like to get a sample of this. You know. um, so that's it. Um, um, of course, I'd like to thank my sponsor. I should put in the Arizona um, Small Brain Research and Protect and the Promotion Council. I forgot to put it in there. Yeah, you know, for that some fun for this survey work. And uh, um, with that, I'm going to start opportunity to speak to you. And uh, do I have a time to take questions? Which end for Alex, you have to put it to the end?